friends. Let it rip, ladies and gentlemen. I got Chef Juice here. The one and only. And we're talking the Bear Season 3. Welcome to Requiem for a Tuesday. Your boy Adam Pecora here. Let's fucking go. Rate, review, subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday. We're streaming everywhere you got podcasts. Go give give a subscribe. Give a review. Do it all. You got multiple apps. You got multiple opportunities. Rainbow Beach Records. <laughs> sure. Multiplex, Wolfax, Chef Juice, making music, making moves. Listen to them. August 24th, Starlight Skate Park. Great. <laughs> Seriously. I believe it. But With nobody... Gnarly Gap. That'll be fun. That will be fun. Isn't that so fitting at a skate park? It does make sense. We played with them the last time, I think, yeah. Maybe two times ago at that skate park. We played with Gnarly Gap. Good guys, I'm sure. Yeah. Fucking rips. Come on out. MicrowaveMinutes.com. <laughs> yep. Th- when uh, When's episode two coming out? Soon. Very yeah, soon. Yeah, so you can expect one episode every eight to 12 weeks. It's going great. So, you know, get invested. I I was, you know, it's been an active couple of months. Arfat.bigcartel.com. No, it hasn't. When nothing yeah. comes out, that's called inactive. There's my l- definition. There's music coming out. Yeah, okay. Very soon. This uh, guy is a liar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it may be 2025. So let it, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Check out all the stuff. There's links in the description below. Plenty of things. Check them all out. Good stuff. In the meantime, Jeez. here we are. Here we are. Uh, let it rip. The Bear Season 3. The moment has finally come. What a reliable, comforting show. For real. It's, I mean, the last two seasons, we're not, are we, we going to recap any of that? Do we need to? I don't think so, because they're just like... Why are you listening to this episode if you haven't watched the first two seasons? Star-studded fucking seasons. So, yeah, yeah. Well, season one, not really. They had to call in favors for that. Uh, we'll yeah. get into stuff like that. We definitely will talk about that level. Anyway... What are you looking at? Is there a fly in here? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at the radio hat poster. You're making me nervous. No. It's sorry. Anyway, we're going to do episode by episode breakdown, and then we'll get into like an overall thing. But point being, if you haven't watched the season, save this episode, pause it right now, come back to it when you're done. We're not pulling any punches here. You always do that. You're re- you do a really good job at telling the listener, like, dude, like, don't listen to this. Well, if you don't want number to one, it. yeah, people really complain about that. Oh, for other po- movie podcasts, I in didn't general. know that. What What do you expect anybody to say if they're going to talk about something but not mention any of what happens in it? Yeah, like exact- that, it's exactly. impossible. It really is. I can't do it. So I'm not good enough. To beat around the bush, number one. <laughs> Is that what you're actually saying? Do some podcasts beat around the bush that much? No. So, well, some people are that good at it, God. where they're like, "Well, they'll do the like, here's the here's the first episode, and then we do the spoiler episode later." Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, people that are like in the realm of like, we get advanced screenings of things. God. So it. we can talk about it before it comes out and then after it comes out, like those type of people. I'm mm-hmm. not saying they're being lazy i mean it's a skill you not being able to beat around the bush isn't a lazy thing it's just a thorough thing hence why you warn i'm a direct man (laughs) uh and number two don't do the timestamp thing because that's too much work for me so nobody would know when it actually anything actually starts or doesn't start or whatever yeah so let's do it up front and it is implied it's implied for movie most of the time it's implied i think but i like to say it for any new release type stuff because wait yeah this came out last week we were this came out on wednesday yeah this came out yeah it will be less than one week from the release of this episode And let me just say i was immediately ready i was like well we should watch it tonight right to hannah and she's like i guess oh i had it pre-planned what does she mean (laughs) i guess I didn't say that. She said that. Well, that's what I'm saying. What's she talking about? I'm going to have to talk to her. (laughs) (laughs) I guess. Please. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, dude. Like, we had the food ready, and Hulu was up 
to the page at 7.01, we refreshed it and turned it right on. That's fucking sick. There was I didn't not, do that at all. I was, it's my favorite show. Active. Word, word. That's real. Now that Succession's over, that's all that there, That's all that's what left. Show. Would you ever rewatch it? What? Succession. Of course. Nice. I just, what do you mean? I just said it was my favorite show that was on. Um, and <laughs> just so I'm on the same page as you. Did you rewatch any of the last episodes before you got onto the third season? I was going to, and then all of a sudden, the premiere date was like there, and yeah, I was like, up. "Oh, didn't even." Didn't even remember. I was just watching a... By the time I remembered, there was not enough time. There was an interview with Jeremy Allen White on Stephen Colbert. He said they wrapped like two weeks before they were like the last episode aired. Two weeks. Yeah, they turn around quick. That's a quick turnaround. They do it like old school TV style. They film it, edit it, it's ready, next one. Wild. I'm pretty sure. Their production schedule was insane from the jump. Um, At first... Because of low budget. Oh. And they had to just like fit it all in. And that's what I said they were calling in favors. Like Bernthal, that's a favor. Mikhail, that's a favor. That's why they're in it for 10 seconds. Oh. And then it's a surprise hit. Now season two, that's why they pulled out all the punches. Everybody's going everywhere. People want to be on the show. And it has the perk of this is the last time everybody was easy to schedule. In right. terms of the main cast. Right. Whereas now, they filmed this season rumored to be back-to-back with season four because they're not going to be able to get everybody again anymore. That's real. Everybody's a movie star, you know? I wonder how many more seasons they could do. I think the fourth one will be the last one. It. The creator has said in interviews that it was never meant to be like they'd never had any intention of it being a long term project show. Right. He said he envisioned it being three to four. Now, when I say envisioned it, there's also no like master predetermined ending. It's not like breaking or no breaking bed wasn't like that. Sorry. But whatever (laughs) the whole basically. But like he doesn't know how it's going to end. So that is how it is like breaking bad. Got it. Um. But yeah, I, I feel like the fourth season will be the last one, especially after what the third season was, which we will dive into right now. Yeah, true. So episode one, what a fucking episode. What a beaut right off the bat. I'm fucking pumping my fist in the air. The magic is there. It It's as high of a high as all of season two. Like To me, season two far surpassed. The first season. Yeah, energy-wise, for sure. And then this kicks, up, every kicks way, off the third season in a really sick In sit, quality, like, just way. in general. Like, it just elevated. It became a better show. And I think this has all the, the it was, nuances of that. It shows just how skilled everyone involved is yet again. Like, every year they flex their technical ability nonstop, as well as everybody's acting and all that. But, like... The fact that the whole first episode is basically a montage. Okay, let me back up. Actually, not even just that. The pi- when the pi- I watched the pilot of this show, I was skeptical right away because they did that weird thing with the bear in the cage, and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be some weird like dream shit thing." That I thought was going to be like an overarching thing. That there was going to be some weird, almost like supernatural element. Yeah. To this show. Yeah. Basically, that was just a, not a good way to intro this show because it was very misleading, at least when I watched it. And then they complete that went away completely. And then they kind of tied it back in in season two, I feel like at one point, but I may be making that up. And then my second criticism that I would say from the beginning of the series. I think it was on their opening night to some degree. They brought that back. For okay, sure. that sounds right. And then my second thing was his backstory was weird and it felt like they just couldn't decide it. Like, oh, he was at French Laundry, but then he was in New York, but then he was at Noma. Yeah. And it's like, that seems pretty prolific. Right. This guy's 
25. And it seemed like that was just a like, we couldn't really pick what he did, so he did a bunch. Yeah. And then they kind of left that murky. For the whole time until whole this time. episode. And yes. And it felt like they were just like, you know what? This is now a highbrow, high level show. We can't leave that to the weeds. Like, let's cl- let's tie up loose ends is episode one. For sure. And let's make it beautiful. And let's flex again. We'll get Mulaney for seven seconds. <laughs> we'll get Bernthal again. We'll get Jamie Lee Curtis again. We'll get all of them again. And have them say nothing or one or two sentences. And we will just fucking put our dicks on the table. And we're going to say, there's... 12 lines of dialogue in this whole episode and you're going to fucking eat it up and that's what I did. That's, there was not a moment where I wasn't like, this is taking my breath away. <laughs> this is fucking magic and this is why we love television. For sure. This show is the best. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Um, In the same manner that it's disorienting because of all the jumps, because of how fast it is, it's almost as if, like you said, they tied up loose ends. They gave you how much stress you had to deal with for those first two seasons in like one episode. Just like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, like this is what this guy's been up to This for is exactly seven how years. he feels so that you're going to get up to speed with like what you're about to go through with him. Because... Uh, that's why I well, also love also, the episode is because it's only basically it's if we're worried about him the whole time. And but it's also basically like you're watching him get corrupted in a mo- like in like a Pixar montage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and the, I, the it's like watching the up guy lose his wife. Like that's what this was. Bernthal's like part in that episode and pays off so well for the rest of the season. You're thinking about him when you don't see him on screen a lot of the time. This, yes. So this, jumping ahead, but that doesn't matter because, like I said, we're spoiling anyway. Turn it off (laughs) uh, if you don't want to hear. They basically reveal what the season is about in this episode. Exactly. It's about It's about how you fucking end up like this. And it shows a young, eager, hungry kid with passion who's constantly just creating and coming up with ideas, and then you watch his life get ruined, basically, (laughs) um, by both his family and his... And Joel McHale. Well, (laughs) but it's the the family more than anything because I would say you'd be naive to not understand that that's why Joel McHale was acting that way. Because I understand that about Kitchens. That it was family... More than you're him. not listening. OK, <laughs> no, <laughs> that the way Joel McHale acts is how it works. Like, yeah, well, you'd be yeah, naive yes. to think otherwise. No, no. So to be like, you're, he's you're ruined... talking about the very end, how he like, no, isn't just, it? I was answering what you said. No, that guy was like that. That restaurant that he was at with that guy as the chef, that was the moment that it all changed. And that was what fucked him up the most. I think. No, but you're not listening to my point. I'm saying you'd have to be naive to be like, that guy's being mean (laughs) to me. (laughs) Oh, oh, yeah. Well, and that's ruining my life. It's like, that's how it works, though. He's doing that as a motivational tool. Like, why are. Well, it just seemed like all the other places were so peaceful and like, oh, my gosh, I'm learning. You know, like it was really nice. Like the other chef, Daniel. But I'm saying in that episode, I have the awareness that like that's how chefs act in certain kitchens. Yeah, in certain kitchens. Okay, but if you're already in the culinary world, then you're aware that that's that that happens. Yes. What I'm Uh, so what I'm saying is he shouldn't it shouldn't. I don't think that you should believe that he got there and the guy was just that much of an asshole and that that shocked him. (laughs) That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, that it was... Yes, yes. I think that it was... He was so immersed in that being a part of his life that that allowed what happened to his brother slip away from him completely. That's true. That's what the trauma came from. Right. I think that if... His brother hadn't died while he was there. I don't think that he would view Joel McHale as negatively. 
oh, that's real. That's the point I'm trying to make. That is not something that I thought of at all. Now, I don't know if they thought that nuancedly about it. My thing is just like nobody would be that high profile and see a chef acting that way and not understand that that's just his crazy like French style or whatever that is. Yeah. Because that's a very common thing. That yeah. at least like like even in movies and stuff, it's portrayed like super dramatic. I also forgot the piece that he was there when he died. That was like you had that. Well, whole scene. that was was that in the first episode or was I jumping that was the ahead first for scene. that? No, that was the first scene. That was the first. Sorry, that was oh, the first episode. And they kept reusing it though throughout the season. We they came kept back to that it. service because that was the service right. that he was serving that thing with um grapefruit or something. The Sydney one. Yeah. Um, the Sydney one. The Sydney one? When he served it to... It ended up that's being That's correct, Sydney. yes. That's the right. end of the first episode, right? Right, right, right. right. Not my yeah, shades. and then they all... But they also did use stuff from this episode where they showed, like, different perspectives of it, like, throughout the season later to keep, like... Rem- you know what I You're mean? You're right. Like, they did come back to more. it. Every time, like... So that's why I wasn't sure if it was in this one or not, but... Yeah, we came back to that steak a lot. That really tiny piece of steak that was probably so fucking good, oh, dude. dude That's the one that he get kept getting fucked up, like pissed at uh, during service when they were serving it at the restaurant. Right. Um, that was the end of season one, though. We hit that. We hit it. Episode one. Yeah. What episode one? <laughs> Sorry. Right. But yeah, I just wanted to reiterate the point of like, what the fuck? This was so good, <laughs> and. The fact that they got more, they also added, they leveled up, not just, hey, here's a bunch of stars. We're going to get the real best chefs in the world in these episodes, that was really too. Cool. Like, that's fucking crazy. I had to look the one dude up, Daniel. I didn't know who that guy was. Yeah. But I was like, that seems like a real guy. Um, So that was very cool. Yeah, um, he's a legendary chef. It's pretty right. cool. But I still I still think it is pretty unrealistic that he could have worked at that many restaurants of that caliber. It's like, what's he there for? Six months at a time? How much are you really yeah, learning? Six months to a year is usually what they do. I mean, I guess if you are that prolific, you would um, learn. There that were quickly. actually when I worked at Royster, there were a lot of people that just came through for a few months just because just to just to level just up, just to learn and go. Yep, that's yeah. exactly what they do, and it makes sense if you want to work in the best places and you have the time and you are able Commit to do to it, it, then you do it. You know, right. That's the real, that's how you become like an ex, a really good experienced chef is by traveling the world and doing it. This right. one guy I knew he did, he did it off of cruise boats, cruise ships. Well, that sounds terrible. But he would get off and, you know, wherever sure. that best restaurant in the world is, he right. hangs out there for six months to a year, doesn't have anything tying him down. It's like perfect. That is pretty smart. Now, in Carmi's case, he was running away. He was running away. He wasn't just. Well, but it's. See, that's the thing. His brother pushed him away. His fam- his entire family pushed him away. To you, do it. And you really he don't realize not, it as much until now. He until did this not season. want to run away. Right. He wanted to just run the beef shop. He wanted to open and, well, that restaurant. Well, he wanted to turn it into a restaurant. Right, right. Still, like it was always the dream of his. It seems like that was midway through his career. He was home and he was talking about it, you know, like before he died. Right. It was that's like the thing. Mikey just knew he's like, that's not happening, bro. Like, I'm dying. <laughs> like, he knew. Um, and then it was also. Or was he stashing the cans in there for him? For Carmi. Who, what, what do you think? He was, he was working himself into a hole. Or was he setting aside all that money so that they could really do it? Well, that was probably the intention, but. He knew he was dying, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Either way. Like, he was like, I- I'm not going to get out of this addiction. Right. So stay away from me and go, like, flourish. And then they also reveal that it was, I don't know if this is later either, but whatever, that after the seven fishes, that's just when he decided to bail, like, right then. So that Oh, I was... guess I missed that. That was right after, huh? Yeah. And then it was also revealed that he could not go into his brother's funeral. They show him in the car. Right. And he just doesn't go. Right. And it's like, come on, man. How do you not manage to do that? Yeah, that's fucked up. I just don't even understand that. That's another level of something. Right. That's beyond what I'm dealing with. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, And lastly, 
Well, this does lead us right into uh, episode two. What we left off was the non-negotiables list. Oh, yeah. That was all that first That was episode. the whole present day part of yeah. the first episode, which is dumb. Insane. Um, the whole... I also kind of disagree with this as a decision. Like, they very clearly needed some type of season arc, but they had already r- done all this and right. decided what the restaurant was going to be, and they were supposed to just be figuring out the menu. Oh, one other thing that we left off was... The menu items at the restaurant? One thing that they tied up. They're just like, oh, yeah, we said we were going to have a beef window on the side. Right. And then they just go, open it tomorrow, (laughs) which I love that. Let's just get it out of the way. Let's assume that you guys actually did it, and then that's great. And it's there, and we just move on. Right. And that's cool, and that's good for continuity. That makes me happy. I hate when shows don't follow through on shit like that. Do you think realistically they would keep the window, too? I feel like they would, right? I would. Yeah, why not? Because right. the place wasn't struggling. It was still open at the very least. Regulars and all that yeah. shit, you might as well. Well, throughout the season, you you learn that it's like basically the only thing making them money. Right. So it's like... Which also makes sense. It's like, it, like I said, the business was fine. If you can fit it in, you might as well do it. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I just don't think that he would go to that list when they'd already decided the whole thing. What is the point of... Changing it at the last minute, that's going to ruin, like, planning is better, you it, know? <laughs> I, I think it's to, like, tie in that uh, every second counts in that w- and ever, you know, and, like, kind of make you feel grounded in, like, that there's this, like, that the philosophy, it's like a written philosophy kind of deal. It's like, it wants you to have something to, to be able to read. Yeah, and I guess... Also, kind of like what happened with Claire and the break that he had and that realization that he had, quote unquote, was like, oh, no, I need to I can't take this light like I need to run it like I was running it in Denmark and San Francisco and New York. Yeah. He's like, why would I not do that if that's all that I've ever done is the highest level shit? Exactly. So I guess that does kind of make sense. But. Yeah, he does. It's kind of like a losing his mind kind of deal. So here's Correct. my here's my little my other agreement. thing though is that like yeah, how does he that quickly turn into Joel McHale? True. I just feel like the whole point and reason of why he was so interested in partnering with Sydney is that she kind of grounds him. And I don't know. I guess the implication is that like he needs Claire and Sydney to be grounded, basically. Like. He needs a mom and a girlfriend. And no, if he only has one, it's not enough. <laughs> like, I think that's pretty much the problem. I think what we're supposed to understand is that even though I guess by the second season, too, I started to realize that I'm not really a fan of Sid's character at all. I don't really like. That's S- a hot take. I love that. Keep I don't going. really like Sydney's like whole inability to handle any real situation as a business person because she's supposed to be out of culinary school able to handle this shit and she's like can't uh, like okay so but that's this her is trauma a backstory also though yeah i get it but also <laughs> no i it. don't you He's didn't angry. work in the best restaurants in the world you don't know really what you're about to get yourself into so why are you having this inability to uh, communicate with this guy who's very clearly traumatized more than you disturbed well, you can't play that game. disturbed unwell she is supposed to but be that's on him she's not supposed to be this weathered chef she's supposed to be this brand new ready to go green chef who if you are a green chef you you're a yes man you sign that partnership agreement the second but episode that's not what a partnership is that's her yes problem. it is when you're green and you don't realize that you it's that is, You're angry. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's the biggest divide. That's like also, I just think that's one of the biggest holes in this whole story through the third season specifically is you're right. Well, no. He, how quickly did he become Joel McHale is because he's already as he's fucked up level. as him. So it's not like, about being more or less fucked up. That's not what the I mean, fucked up is. like rude to your employees and like unable to like not be able to handle yourself on the line on the pass and during service. And she's she's choosing not like to Joel not McHale. say literally anything. 
right? So, well, wait, how do we get here? Why did you, why, I, I... You're really mad. I don't know. This really struck a nerve with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was the second episode where I was like, this is weird. Why is this like this? Oh, because you were like, how is he becoming, Joel, already becoming this uh, horrible chef? And it's because um, he's... But what I'm saying is that's not how it was going last year. That was the whole thing. She was always there to check him. So for her to stop checking him immediately out of nowhere doesn't really make sense. That is partially true. Uh, Well, I think the reason is I kind of get what you're saying, and I think that's also why she won't. There's two reasons combined why I think that she kind of falls back. Number one is just the reality that I think she does kind of realize she does say it. You're making these dishes better, but that's not the point that I'm making. The point that she's trying to make is that, like, for me to be truly your partner means that I have a say in the menu and that you don't truly get to override my choices. Right. But she also has the anxiety problem and she know she knows he's right that he number one he is better and number two it's called the bear after his name right so i think she she does kind of know that like this started as me being like your prodigy but like by definition we are supposed to be equal like that's the partnership agreement you know what i'm saying so i think in like literal terms that's why she's angry, but that's why she can't say it, though, because he is doing what's best for the menu, ultimately. That's But she's more hurt on a personal level. Right. But that's why she's not saying anything, because she is professional. And he just isn't handling anything properly. Right. And I would say the reason why he's not like Joel McHale, he's like that in terms of just being an asshole, but he really is just like a fucking explosive like and that's not how it should be either way. Like you still need to have your fucking shit together. Right. Like Joe McHale's a robot. Well, and you know uh, what I mean? It, You're a fucking bomb. That's so much worse. And he is um, unpredictable. That's by the second episode. He's not that bad. It got worse really quick. That's what I'm saying. It does seem sudden. And I get it. Like. But it's because it's a new season. You have to think this is happening right after the Claire thing. Oh, no. And they also... They just that, opened. That's true, but... You it, know, that happened on goes opening by, night. I know that happened on opening night, but time goes by really quickly in the second season. They do a lot of services or what feels that's the like whole a second long episode. time. Right. It's just like months have gone by now and he's still being a fucking asshole. But, that, but what I'm saying is like that technically just means it hasn't changed. And gotten worse. It happened from opening night and just got worse. Right. That's right. what it, that's Just what like zeroed, like in like less than their first year, it's like a disaster, you know? Right. And I mean, that, that the whole episode is just super intense. All they do is fucking... Argue. Argue. It's argue. terrible. Well, it's that him and Richie also can't say it to right. each other right they're both holding in something deeper that's just building and building the whole time um but and, and i also think that richie's getting better though richie has been getting that's it's the great. problem the problem with carmy with richie specifically is that everything carmy did worked right like for richie you mean specifically to train him and all that stuff yeah like that well i think that's also kind of lost on everybody except for marcus in this season is that uh he just spent a year sending you guys all over the world and to all of these great places and you all got a hundred percent better at everything and so like that's why they also harken back to like oh day one there it was like a shitty beef shack that was filthy and disgusting and it's like one year went by and now this is like one of the nicest restaurants you've ever seen like in cleanliness or whatever all that stuff oh you mean they didn't acknowledge it enough I feel like it nobody's really grateful. Right, right. Because he is an asshole, though. He That's does the treat them like absolute dog shit. Yes. But he changed everybody's lives a hundred times over and, um, on the staff. It is also lost on... not Maybe not Sydney. Like, she would have gotten there anyway, you could argue, with somebody else. Well, she got it at she, the expense of a lot of emotional turmoil because she got offered this other really great deal because of it. That's the payout. 
for right. her for but sure. But you have to remember that her origin was that like she had an offer at Alinea or whatever they yep. say in like the first episode. So it's not like she wasn't sought after prior to this. She took a shot with him because she admired him because of that dish in New York. Right. But yes, then the guy from Ever is like Ever's this closing. A, that's a huge jump, though. But it, something does happen between her and him in the second or third episode, I'm pretty sure. If I'm not mistaken, they run into each other. No, 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 no. That's still midway through the show or this third season. Are you sure? I I maybe it is the second episode that they run into each other, and something else happens between that guy. No, and it's the fourth episode. You're right. Got it. See, that's still. But either way, yeah, their back and forth was essentially sign the agreement. But then she's just like, all you guys do. She was sick of everything, basically. Um, I mean, she did confront him the one time, and she was just like, dude, I'm not your fucking babysitter. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, the guy was totally out of control. Uh, Marcus returns and everybody just has his back. Um, but he, the, what I'm saying was when he comes back to Carmi, he's just like, I'm good with this list, like the non-negotiable list. He's like, whatever you want to do, man, just fucking make it happen. Like, make sure you actually get us to where you're trying to say, like, we're ne- we need to go. Yeah. And like, should you be on board with a raging lunatic? Like, kind of no. But at the same time, like, he's the only one qualified and he's right about everything. Yeah. It's just like, is this sustainable? Which it is not. Uh, so then we move to episode three officially. <laughs> kind what of. What? Yeah, that was a rough episode, but it seemed entirely necessary. Yes. And then we go to Marcus's funeral. He delivers a beautiful speech that's very sad, and it was incredibly moving. I I cried. Did you? Hard. For really? This one. Yeah, dude. Um, I just think that, you know, in a similar way that Carmi had, you know, ran away from his problems and, like, you know, had this issue being at that restaurant when his brother died, um... Marcus, it's almost like a parallel with the way that Marcus is handling it. And it sets this dynamic that you really start to care about Carmi's character for this other reason now, which is like but he's trying to be there for somebody that might have gone through the same thing or is going through the same thing. And it's worse, or it seems, because Marcus is just like doesn't say much, you know. And he's, Well, he thinks Marcus is doing what he did. Right. But the difference between the two is that Marcus was there for his mom and cared for his mom the whole time so he assumes marcus is feeling the same thing but marcus is actually at peace with it because she was sick for a long time and he knew it and he did everything he could that's true and like he said he's like she would have wanted me to be out living my life and not sitting there with her as weird as that sounds but like and he's probably right about all that the difference was carmy left didn't even know it happened didn't answer any of the phone calls and was just getting shit on by some guy at the same time, you know? So it's like, and he probably just went to work the next day. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's like, they're literally like complete opposites, but they understand each other. Yeah. But the funeral was just, I was like, yeah, I was crying my little eyes out. (laughs) It was, I believe that. Uh, and that's when the bills start coming in and he's like, why'd you spend $12,000 on butter? The which, money stuff does start to become a huge problem. Which is absolutely insane. But this is the one part where it doesn't make sense because I understand that you're going to go into a hole because the place is closed and then it's remodeling and it's all of that and you're getting nice shit. But I don't understand, even if he's this good, he wouldn't. Why would he be running a menu that doesn't make a profit? Um, because he, it he, is an exaggeration. He for un- sure. he would understand that if the place closes, he can't get a Michelin star. No, well, no, they <laughs> do talk about saying? the finances of it. They they only were able to do part of it was not that he wasn't making food and selling it at the price that was making them money. It was that they weren't efficient enough because they were so angry at each other or they just didn't operate well right. together. Right, they weren't turning because tables. Because he wasn't doing, yeah, they could only do, I think 
one night in that episode, it was like one and a half turns. Yeah. And it should have been like two and three quarters or something. Right. Like turn the whole room twice and then, you know, some bar and like some people sitting at the tables, but they couldn't even get through one full rotation out and then half of that. Right. That's a problem. That is bad. And that is, you know. But I will say the beef should be doing regular business as it used to. Right. I feel like just acknowledge that that it's offsetting it a little more than it actually is. Yeah, no, you're right. The guy, the family investor isn't going to fucking be down their throats after they just made this entirely meticulous restaurant. Like, And be like, oh, we've been open for two months. How am I? Th-? Yeah, they just should have done oh, it a little more yeah. subtle. It, they went too far with it. I think. Well, they just hopped right into it. Like he was immediately worried in this episode. And you're like, well, wait, like. Yeah, well, but the it's also the factor that he's still that Carmi's family still owes that guy a bunch of money before. Right. You know, so that's almost, the real thing. He's almost a million in the hole. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And so is he. You know, he's like, oh, I wish I was there for you guys. But really, he's been in debt with other people. That's what's going on. It seems like, you know, that's like, probably true. That's when he starts talking about the computers in like the third episode. You know, it's like. I will say they did make an effort to add comedy in with stuff like that, though, like a guy named Computer and all that shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) They keep it they keep it light where they need to keep it light, but not for a. Well, I guess especially for this episode with the funeral, it is really necessary to have a little bit of humor. But even aside from us being so sad about, you know, Marcus feeling the way he's feeling, you're also so upset and stressed out for the services that they have to go through they're in this horrible. episode. They're yeah, so they're bad. And they gave a bigger role to Maddie this season. Whole lot more Maddie Matheson throughout this season. Yeah, I we feel love like. the facts. And it's awesome. He's they're awesome. They're great. Neil is uh, fun too. His, his brother is very clearly like w- I'm clearly doing a bit. Every time he talks, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, that's what those guys are like, you know? No. I mean, Maddie's... The other guy's not as good. Maddie's a genuine yeah. actor. He's like... But he that's the thing. He's the, doing a the great The other guy's job. actually an actor, and he's not an actor. I, I get it. I'm not trying to compare them. They're literally brothers and next to each other in almost every scene <laughs> they're in. <laughs> so you have no choice but to compare them. Yes. <laughs> and so I Maddie's way up on that. I like, love that guy. The, the thing He's when he, awesome. The thing when he tries to do the when he tries to serve the soup or whatever, <laughs> and then he just pours it and walks away. That was so good. Yeah, that was awesome. No, it would be silly if Neil also worked dinner service. That would be fucking weird. It's funny that when like Maddie's best scenes is like when he's trying to do dinner service. <laughs> yeah, right. And he has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which would never be the case. Uh then Sydney gets a new apartment, which, you know, whatever. I didn't really need that. Is that the third episode? That's fourth episode. We're oh, we're moving in the fourth. on, but I got I got it. I'm running through it. You don't need to pull it up. I don't have it pulled up. We're we're I was we're... looking at cats. Yeah, that's worse. <laughs> that was my point, really. <laughs> uh <laughs> And then right after that, that is when she runs into the ever guy who's like, I'm starting a new place. Yes. Come get it. Now, seems odd that they don't really seem to know each other at all and that he would just be that in on it without really knowing how involved she is at the bear. Oh, he's sleazy for that for sure. He knows the one dish she did somehow. Like Sleazy. It seems like... He ate there. If anything, he... Right. Oh, he knew the dish, the one dish that she made? Yes. I thought she was like, I no, don't even know who made re- it. Remember, she, correct. But that was the one that she leaked that one time in season two. Doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I could be way off in that, but that's what I was assuming. Oh, yeah, I don't remember And he that was much. pissed that it was like her name drop or whatever. Whoa. I don't know. I could be way off. I could be way off. Anyway, yeah, they I went to each other. I, I was assuming either that or that he had some beef with Carmi from when they worked at Ever. I didn't even think that. I don't even think it is, it, it's about their relationship, like the guy at Ever is in Carmi's relationship. I think that it was, it's like... A, Sabotage, just in general? No, like I literally just think that he was like, I want to get 
the new young chef that's like got all the names in the papers, the guy at ever, so that I can have a successful restaurant now with the same person. Because even if his name, her name wasn't all over the papers over it, like she's clearly the reason why this restaurant is doing what it's doing because Carmi has just kind of sabotaged himself in so many but ways. But nobody knows that publicly. Oh, I didn't really think about that either. Yeah. So either way, it seems like a sleazy thing on his end, not just because of their relationship. It's just like, I want to get that new chef, you know? Or I think it was that he ate there and he said that it was like loud and he heard them screaming. That's what it was, right? He did say that. Yeah, yeah he hinted yeah, yeah. at it. And so he just knew he could poach her, but that's fucked up either way. Yeah. It's fucked up of him to do that and it's fucked up of her to consider it, really. Like, y'all just opened. Again, See why it through. I didn't I would But also that's also part of the thing. So we're supposed to assume that like a month or two has gone by and she still hasn't signed the agreement. So how's she getting paid? Hourly? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because then later on the dude's like, I looked it over, you'll get paid this. So it's like, so what, you haven't had a fucking check yet this whole time? Right, right. That's what's confusing. You sign a new apartment, you don't know what your salary is? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, yeah. It doesn't make sense. That is a big flaw. We're poking holes here. Well, and, I'm, I'm and not the that thing about, about it. it is by the time. So in my head, it was like they opened about six months go by and then she runs into that guy. And still, like we find out after the fact that someone else was able to read that partnership agreement. And so even with that partnership agreement from either places, they're like a couple thousand dollars difference because the what was 10 name? grand a year. Right. 10 grand of a difference a year. Yes. Yeah. That's like silly to bail for sure. Yeah, for sure. For no, to not even do it yet. You know, to not even pull the trigger on either of them as oh, a right. young green chef. Right. You're like, I'm going to take the it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know take what I mean? one. Yeah, yeah, take one, but don't be. How are you indecisive? I see what your point is. Yeah. Signed all contract. That's huge. Yeah. I the get indecisiveness is a huge thing. But I that's like also her. her thing. That right. is her personality. Exactly. So, I mean, it's not like it's out of character, but it is a little, yeah, a little thin. Uh, this is also when we uh have Richie talk to his ex-wife's new hubby and that was weird and then nothing really came of that i don't i just there's no way that that would happen ever yeah uh, honestly. Honestly. it was just weird i didn't like it uh um, well i guess we forget what happened to her family I, what's going on with that you know like th that seemed like a really important reason why they had such a weird dynamic they have no they didn't really do richie's divorce they didn't yeah. do richie's divorce how long were they even married like we don't even really know probably not very long they how, talked about oh it wait i guess bit. how old is the kid they broke up right after they had the yeah, kid right correct yeah so it's been a long time yeah yeah that's the other thing like it's weird i mean yeah he's gone into it slightly it was basically just like richie was a inconsiderate asshole for a long time that right. there's nothing that crazy to it that's why they're still able to get along right um and then also, I will say the other thing that's weird about the time jump is that they're like, at the end of this one, that's when they're like, oh, no, the Trib was already here for a review. It's like, yeah, no shit. You've been open for months. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, like. They would have been there. Yeah, you're you're a well-known chef. There's going to be people there the first week. What are you talking about? But, <laughs> like, yeah, you've like, been reviewed like 20 times. But like, you know what I mean? There's a bunch of reviews in the works. Like, what do you think's happening? Um, well, I guess something something to consider is that he has um, he has done restaurants for a long time and he has been worked at all these renowned restaurants. But like. I feel like we don't really consider him like a decorated chef as somebody that has been the front runner of many restaurants for a long time now but he's worked under all of these really great chefs chefs he would so, get no he would get the publicity no problem the fact that okay it's that's the, it's, that's that's true it's this simple he fucking went to open he bought or he inherited his brother's italian beef restaurant and sydney knew he was there that's true People you're right fucking you're know right. who this guy is exactly he got invited to ever's close exactly like He's legit. I people was trying to come up with logic as to why maybe people wouldn't know, but I guess it didn't work. No, <laughs> the hype would be huge. Right. Um, they fucking got Grant in this show. Um, wait, yeah. W are we getting that's this? later? Okay, because we'll we'll <laughs> I jumped ahead. I jumped ahead. Um, 
that's basically it for season four. Honestly, yeah, the personal life stuff so far in this didn't care for, like we said. Sydney's thing with her dad could have just not been in there. Richie's thing with the new hubby could have just not been in there. Now, Richie's thing later with his ex-wife at the park, that was good, and I like that, and that actually progressed the story. Um. Well, here's the thing about the per- the all the different sides of the other characters outside of you know Carmen and the whole storyline between you know the brother and the family, et cetera, the money stuff, the restaurant itself. We like started to really love all those same characters in the second season because they were all becoming successful and ready for their restaurant opening. Now we're it's almost like they're not tying up loose ends, but they're giving us little peeps into like. These characters that we liked Which, and how stre- like kind of you know stressful their personal no, that's lives can a, be. That's a great point because season one, no personal life. Exactly. Every part of it's in the restaurant. Now that was because of budget and whatever. Well, no, it seems so. It was so awesome. Like we but, were so stoked for. But it. But that's the thing. Season two, what's what's exciting was branching out and doing all this new stuff. Yep. And now they just kind of have to maintain it. And that's what it felt like. It felt like they felt like they had to instead of they wanted to. Right. I think they had to because if we were to just watch this restaurant just get fucking rocked every night, I would not like the show. You uh, know, I would I would still definitely do it either way. <laughs> no, dude, that anyway, would be fucking tragic to watch. So we'll go to episode five. We're this is gonna be like two hours long, by the way. <laughs> we are not. But this wait. is gonna, I'd rather be thorough. I'd rather be thorough. <laughs> wait, wait, sorry. What was the end of that last episode? That was the end of four. That's what I said. That yeah, the Tribune. That was how that it was That's like a right. cliffhanger. We're getting reviewed? Like, <laughs> one of, but I get it. Also, they're trying to convey that, like, that's how fucking chaotic and toxic this is. Nobody's paying attention. That's a really good point. Everybody's yeah. just on their toes. Yep. So, you know. They're just trying to get by <laughs> right. at this point. It's like, no, you need to be, like, on top of it and making money, and you just drop the ball majorly. Um. So next is when computer comes in. Oh, God. And starts actually running through and cutting costs. Up until this point. We've only seen Claire, like, couple clips here or there, b- which yeah. is good. I don't, I think the love interest was just like a fun little, I don't know. It, it, but he's not speaking to her. What's she going to do? We're just going to follow her around and now she's, gets oh her no, own story? I, I guess when I say that, I mean like him fucking fixing that first. Like that seems like the first thing that I would have wanted to happen at the beginning and of this that's season. that's why they didn't do that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. hundred percent why they didn't do that. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's also just would be out of his character. That's a good point. They're keeping these people as real to themselves as they can. That's that's real. Um, so that happens. He tells we got to cut Marcus's pay. Natalie's like, fuck that. Uh, Yo. That was right. Up. And then this to showcase how chaotic it is. They're like they reviewed some dish and we haven't made that dish in months and we don't know what ingredients we use that night. And there's no way for us to know because we change the menu every day. The non-negotiables are not working. Correct. And then that that's when the, the, the closure of ever is a thing. That's when it gets announced. That's when it gets officially announced. I was really confused. I thought that somebody there died. Because, yeah, they said the funeral and all that stuff. I didn't realize that that was what they They made that. it seem like the chef died. I also thought that at Okay, first. that was... Uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one that felt that way. No, they made it seem like the chef died. Um, And that person is not an actual chef. That is an actress, I'm pretty sure, right? Yes, that's Olivia Coleman. She's awesome. She's not the chef of Ever, and Ever's not She closed. really feels like the chef that whole time. Right. <laughs> it's awesome. But Ever's also not closing for the room. I know that. It's I know that. <laughs> going strong, yeah. Well, now more than ever <laughs> yeah i mean I, I no you couldn't get in there anyway that they're they were doing fine um that's a two star come on three is that three now i think it might have three now I, I don't know it has two or three i couldn't tell you but i can tell you that all these people watching this show on hulu are gonna be like we need to go and eat there now yeah until they see that it's a fucking 12 course 300 hundred dollar tasting menu and then they're not everybody <laughs> watches tv you know you never know somebody might want to drop that pretty penny but people with money know about it that's the point i'm trying to make it's not a secret oh i get what you're saying <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> not well yeah you're just <laughs> you, don't, you, 
You don't have to argue on the show. We, I'm not trying we're, to we're argue. Going, we're going to argue naturally. You don't need to force it. <laughs> it wasn't a force. <laughs> anyway. No, that was the end of the episode. Never mind. <laughs> we got, we got anyway. Apparently not a lot happened on this one. I mean, that was a big fucking deal. I'm only going off of Wikipedia tiny recaps. So if I miss something, whatever. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like... Oh, the only reason... Yeah, I was just kind of like... Midway through the season, I was like... That's when I took my first break. You know, I binged it two you times. You know what? Same. I did five and... F- I did five and then three and fell asleep and then did three. <laughs> but... I did five and five. This is a point that I wanted to make that I realized by the third episode. Like, midway through the third episode. I was like, oh... They didn't want to come up with that much of a story for this season. Oh, for sure. I I could tell that they were stretching it out, which was fine. The episodes were excellent, as we had just said. Like, there was no fault in the episodes. Even if you think in season one, the one-take episode, that episode's about nothing. The whole thing is just, here's a chaotic kitchen for 30 minutes. The show does this, and it does a great job of it. So yeah. that's not a criticism. But it was just very clear that not a whole lot was going to happen story-wise and that it was just very noticeable. Like episode one, no words. There's not really any dialogue and like technically nothing happens. It's backstory stuff mostly. Yeah. And so that was like, oh, that was great and cool and they fill in the blanks and all this stuff and then just still kind of like nothing really happens story-wise again. Obviously a million things happen. And so by episode five, oh, you know what? That was my other point for episode five. By episode five. What's the name of episode five again? Children. Oh. It was also a hundred. It was that's just by, by then it was 100 percent clear that like. I was right, like my instincts were correct. You know what I mean? We're not doing a whole lot here. Yeah. Episode five upset me kind of a lot, to be honest. Because this show has always loved to do the surprise big star. Yeah. And they've always done a great job, and it it always puts a smile on your face. You go, oh my god, I can't believe they got that guy. I can't believe this person's in this. That's great. This is awesome. Really cool. And then John Cena pops up. (laughs) And honestly... Like, oh, my God, like I said, I was like on the edge of my seat, like pumping my fist in the air. I was smiling ear to ear through episode one through episode two. I was just like, oh, my God. They've like they're not going to lose it. You know what I mean? Like they're on this tier and they're handling it. And th- this show is in great hands, like reaffirming everything I could ever want. And then I saw that guy, and literally, it was like my heart sunk a little bit. Oh, that's so rough. I felt like they jumped the shark. And I was concerned. Honestly, I was like, I knew that that was going to be our stopping point. And was I was like, three or was John Cena? John Cena. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, I'm kind of worried about the rest of this season now. Like, and? I'm worried about tomorrow. No, they didn't. They didn't do anything like that again. Okay. But he was super out of place in this, I felt. Um, he's pretty super out of place in everything. He's just not very good. He looks like, funny. He's yeah, the way that he lost weight in his face is very odd. It Whatever he weird. did with his cheeks and his jaw looks very strange. He number looks, one. Yeah. Number two, he's charming and can do comedic timing and all that stuff. Yep. But he's just John Cena. He doesn't turn into a character ever, and he's just a guy doing bits that is clearly John Cena. Yep. And he especially would not be a fac brother. No. Like. It just doesn't work. You pigeonholed him into that just because you're like, we can get John Cena. And I'm sure they all had a lot of fun. And he seems very nice. I've met him, actually. I met him in sixth grade when I was very into wrestling. How'd that go? Uh, it, he's nice. He's he, a nice. He's he not got big be, hands. He's not gonna be mean to a child. Yeah, big everything. Big guy. <laughs> big guy. I had his signature. I think I gave it to one of our friends or something. I don't remember what happened to it. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, so I'm sure all of that was the case, but th- that part of the episode was just a complete dud to me. And every time he was on screen, I was just like, "This isn't what this show is." No, that was a whole weird beat that they took for and the rest of that episode. Because even 
Richie was like super neurotic about the guy taking the photo. That's not something that I think he would do. You know, like that was yes weird. And no. Yes and no. It was weird. It was weird that he was like neurotic is the right word. Yeah. He would just be like more pushy. I don't know. It's hard to say because he's changed so much. Maybe that's part of it. He's his neuroses is really kicking in for the photo but, of the plate. You know, it's it just seems silly. But yeah, he was just out of place and didn't really do anything either. Like his character didn't serve any purpose. I oh, love I like, love oh, the we're, joke. We're waxing the floors. Like let's get John Cena. I just it didn't work <laughs> for me at all. It was funny at the end. He had this thing about going to get a duck. He's like, I could get a garbage bag or something. I was like, that was pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> it was I'm, the very hey, end I'm not of the saying episode. Though, I'm not saying that he didn't have good lines. That he didn't deliver well. No. it's just he was the wrong guy. He was out of place. I mean, yeah. he was a big guy in that kitchen. It looked funny. It really didn't look right. Yeah, that should have been like. I don't know. No, I can't think of anybody, honestly, who would have been like a great fit right there. Another, it's like another fact, fact like who would have been a fact. Yeah, I don't know. Josh Gad. <laughs> That's not as big of a draw, though. That'd be so funny, actually. If it was him instead of John Cena, I would have loved that. Or like Jonah Hill. That would have been like because he's so he, cool. He's at least like he has lost a no, bunch of weight. No, he's too cool now. You know. No, I know he's got a lot of problems. But either <laughs> way, but like just think about it. Like he's the one who lost weight of the three. He's the guy who's like doing a different oh, thing. I get. Yeah, like, yeah, he, yeah. He would at least fit the mold of like that could be their brother or something. I don't know, but it could have been anybody else. Michael Sarah would have been better for that matter. Jesus Christ! Like, it doesn't right. matter. <laughs> you no, know, it wouldn't have. But you know what I'm saying. It just wasn't the right choice. No, I feel that. I feel that. And it really upset me. And that was also the... Wait, that's not... Is that the computer episode still? Yeah. Okay. Same one. That episode was the weakest one for me. I think by then, too, you start to learn... guy, he just came in and then was just like, oh, these numbers aren't good. Like, he weird. just... It seemed like he was going to show up and do more and then just, like, had, like, a couple conversations that didn't really seem to have any weight or matter. Yeah, um, I just re I remember feeling like you're starting to really realize uh, that the uncle guy is in way more financial trouble than you expected. Right. And it that, does reveal that it it seems important for the rest of the story for sure. Right. But to th learn this that episode and have that happen for the you know to put such emphasis on the photo shoot for the review is like, it, it seemed like that was the important part for sure. Well, I think if anything, too, this episode reveals more of what I just said than anything that they just didn't have that much episode, like right. that much story. Right. And honestly, like this episode could have not been in there and nothing would have really changed that much. Yeah. So this is the one where you really just felt them like trying to, f it's like a filler. Yeah. Um. I also just think it speaks again to the pace of like, how fast the days are moving for them, whereas this one day that has right. a lot of weight to them, it slows down the show for and a second. And it doesn't second. seem like it justifies it. Right. Yes, exactly. Everybody's really impatient in that episode for sure. And then we move on to episode six, directed by Io Beery. I don't know how to say her name. Close enough. Directed? Directed. Whoa, dude. And she did a great fucking job. This is the Tina backstory episode. Bro. Which, she's the only one who really didn't get a fair shake last year. Yep. So, this makes perfect sense. I love that they did this. This, this episode, episode got was, me fucked up. It was excellent. <laughs> First of all, shout out to the dude. I don't know his name, but he played Angel Batista in Dexter, and he was fucking awesome. When I read the Dexter oh, books, the I always heard his voice and saw his face. <laughs> That's who that guy is. Um, it's weird you don't really see the kid ever. It they don't want to get into all that. That's just too I'm much sure. Work. No, it's fine. I, I, it makes it feel like you're closer to Tina the whole time. You're really um, seeing it through her. So interestingly, she worked at Long Grove Confectionery in the show. That's the place that lays her off. Assholes. Long, Long Grove Confectionery is right over here by my apartment. What? Really? It's on Kimball and Addison. It's before Addison, but it's by the Home Depot. Oh, sick. Past Jung Boo. Shout out Jung Boo. Love Jung Boo. I can, oh, dude, I'll get a fucking pork bun right now. Let's go after this. I need to go shopping. Oh, I'll go. All right. Uh, <laughs> 
Dude, I would love a bun. They stop serving them at a certain time, though. We uh, we might not make it. We'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Oh, that's so funny. So she's working there, and they lay her off all of a sudden. And now she's commuting from Pilsen, I just got to say. That'd be tough. tough. That'd <laughs> Dude, be that's exactly tough. Right. <laughs> I she had to go downtown. We know that for sure. They had a lot of logistical problems in the first, in the second they season. Got that right they got it right this time. Out. I think they got it right. I don't right. know if they got it right, her getting to that place, but they got it right after that. <laughs> oh, you mean exact? No, I don't think they got it exact right. I think that they got the feeling of transporting longer make more sense now. Yeah, that's Before true. it was like, she's at Kasama. Now she's in River North. It's like, dude, no way. Yeah, like, that was irritating. Now she's in Chinatown. It's like, no, dude. Well, there was also a thing where like Richie left ever, which was supposed to be, they claimed it was in Lincoln Park, I believe. At which is time, in West Loop, which right? Which is in West Loop. Yeah. But then, like, I don't know. I don't know. We don't, we'd have to go back and review the <laughs> no, tape. No, it's, it's not good. Now they feel like they just it just feels like a long commute, you know? Um, so anyway, she's going place to place, just getting rejected constantly. Um, it's rough. Getting rejection emails some places. Uh, she goes to a place for an interview, and they're like, nah, we filled it already. Like, fuck off. Uh, and she basically just keeps getting rejected by younger and younger people. It's real, dude, and, like, you really, like, you, I think you see it in her eyes over time. Like, she's so eager at the beginning, and by the time, you know, 30 minutes or, tw- you know, 15 minutes into the episode, she's, like, fucking. She's losing it. Losing it, dude. And that's how it is, man. That's discouraging. That happens to a lot of fucking people, too. And imagine you have a kid on top of that. Like, if I lost my job, I'd be fucked, you know? Yeah, dude. So, and the little thing that they sprinkle in there the whole time, dude, she makes dinner almost every time. Right. And it's fucking like, dude, and oh, you can tell what she, a bitch. You can tell she loves doing it. In a it. good way. Yeah, that she loves doing it. Yes. It's like the one time she's smiling throughout the day. Yeah. And it's so rough. Other than when she has to force a smile when she gets rejected at whatever other desk, you and know. And stays nice to everybody, professional the whole way, pretty much. She yep. snaps at that one person at the end, but she was right. That person was being a dick. Wouldn't even look at her. No, dude, rightfully so. She should curse that person out. Like, I would. I Yeah, I would too. Like, fuck you. Take I'd be shit like, down. I'd be like, fucking look at me, dude. Yeah, d- that was the worst. Or it was either they wouldn't look or they were just like pretentious about it. I don't know. It's like looking down at her and shit. And then like she goes to the one place and she's like, oh, you need a bachelor's degree. And she's like, this is my job. That I that, did for yeah, 10 years. Yeah, dude, that's so messed up, dude. That's how it is, though, you know? It's I mean, yeah, that is, people do only accept, you know, degrees, but it's still, like... And then, so, th- this is a one, and then she ends up at the beef, because she was in River North, I assume, for that interview, so she just walks over there, goes to get a cup of coffee. They just give it to her, because who the fuck gets coffee at a beef Richie place? gives her co- the coffee. Correct. Which and you're just like, they probably this would fucking do asshole, I it's, love him. Why do they even have it? And then he just gives her a sandwich because nobody came to pick it up. Yep. Just like courteous neighborhood shit. You know that exists everywhere, and it's great, you know? For sure. Very clearly looked like she was having a bad day. And No, they... no, no. That's not what it was at all. You don't think so? She, w- she was there for five seconds. And that's she's true. like, can I get a coffee? And he's like, here, don't worry about it. Yeah, that's true. And then that's why they showed someone not pick up their sandwich. And he just right. goes, here, take it. Right. Oh, it just it was not not their day. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. He's just trying to move the restaurant along. He doesn't right. yeah. They don't need money. Somebody paid for that sandwich and who gives a fuck about the coffee? That's true. So then she goes in the room by herself and she just basically starts breaking down and then Mikey realizes it. Oh, well, the facts are playing the arcade machines. You're right. Sorry I left that detail out. <laughs> it's if, beautiful. If I didn't mention that the facts were playing the arcade machines, people would have no idea the complexity of this episode. It added a little bit of a level of complexity because, you know, no, Mikey walks in. No and, complexity. Yeah, it did. I think that they're the ones that called out Tina crying, right? Or was it Mikey? I don't it remember. It doesn't matter. The point is somebody would have noticed that there's a woman crying. Yeah, she's like bawling too. Yeah, it's she's fucking weeping. Rough. It's rough. Yeah. Anyway, so he goes over and talks to her, and they just have like a real genuine, human, awesome conversation. They hit it off right away. And naturally, he's like, Well, my job's fucked too because I'm short a person. So you knew where this was going right away anyway. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously. Yeah. And then they share <laughs> everything with each other, and it's just 
awesome, and she gets the job. He's like, yeah, painting the obvious was really cool, like how she ended up there and, and you know, why she... And why? It was just... It was sick. Yeah, how do you well, end no, up working the, at this place The coolest place this part one? was the, the callback to the earlier scene of Carmi sending the photo of that dish to his brother. And that, and then the call, like you see it, like right. him showing Tina. Like she knew f- about Carmi right away. Too. Yes. And it shows how much Mikey really did admire him and was doing it for Carmi. Yes. The whole time he had Carmi's best interests in mind. Yes. Um, and it also just speaks to like, Okay, that's where so Tina was a bookkeeper at a chocolate company <laughs> and now she's working at this high end restaurant. Like it just goes again to show like just how far everybody's really made it. Yeah. Um because you also think she was the stubborn one at the beef who didn't want to change anything either, even yeah. when Carmi came and she knew how talented he was. It puts an edge on why she was doing that is because she was afraid that she was gonna lose her job. Yes. For sure. Right. So th- they really they did a wonderful job of bringing everything back together. Her, yeah, her character just became like you know top five for me in that whole show now. You know, like uh, that was what it did for I me. I did not like her season one. I didn't either. And then season two, she grew on yep. you. And by now, it's like, how can you not love Tina? Like they they know what they they manipulate you in this show. It's pretty sick. Yeah, it's pretty sick. And that episode was phenomenal. Phenomenal. It was fun. It was I was crying too. I got two two out of ten. I was just tears are flowing, <laughs> flowing hard. Now we go to the next one, and it opens with Carmi at an uh, AA meeting, and basically to juxtapose the season two one where he does that massive monologue, yeah, for five minutes or whatever, and it's incredible. He doesn't speak at all and just listens. That's great. And basically someone just explains his exact situation where he's like, it's hard for me to accept someone's apology because I have to live with what they did and they get to move on because I accept their apology. Right. In this case, Carmi would be the one apologizing, but it also applies to like his mom to him and him to other other people and whatever. But it's about Claire mainly. Yeah. He and Richie, he can't apologize to either of them because of what he did to them. He can't forgive himself. Is really what it is. Um I didn't think about any of that when that was happening. I don't know why. Oh, really? I thought it was pretty blatant like we're 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 hitting this on the head here. And then Okay, wait a second. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, the... I need to backtrack. Go ahead. You were right. This is also the episode where he officially offers Sydney the job. The, the guy, guy at ever. ever. Yeah. Episode four, he just says that he ate there and that it was chaotic. It was the nugget. Then it closes. Second nugget. This is the third nugget. And well, not a nugget. It actually happens. So just to clear that up. Yeah. I don't remember what um I don't remember what Sid was doing in this episode, honestly. That's it. That's when she runs into him. Oh, okay. And he, she still just like hasn't signed the contract and that's when Let me keep going. We'll get there. Yeah, I just like So after he has her the job, that's when Carmi has that talk with Marcus like about legacy. And Marcus is basically just like, just that everybody knows I was a good guy and I tried my best and I did everything I could. And Carmi's like, I want to be remembered forever. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? He's like, I'm, yeah, man, like, kudos to you, but I'm on a whole nother ball game here. Uh, Well, no, it comes up, too, because... um, Because of the... It seems like Marcus is trying to find a new legacy for himself, too. Even though he says that, I feel like you can tell, like... In order, who is most worried about their legacy by how committed they are to this crazy project? Right. Because Carmi's like, I'm killing myself over this thing. And Marcus is like, I'm here all the time and I only have two dishes on the menu. And then what's her name is like sneaking in 
and putting her stuff in her locker like i don't really want to talk about it you know it's like right. it's like s- that and that's how the, that episode opens too right no it opens with the alcoholics anonymous meeting oh and then it goes to that mm-hmm. oh yeah that's i just like i remember getting the just the ick over her character after that i was like oh like you're very clearly not interested in like making this work and you should just take this other deal and you should quit dude like why are you gonna stress yourself out more you know she should just take the deal because well, she just needs to pick yeah just pick one i don't i don't know how else it was to ridiculous say um i yeah i also um, fucking loved because after that's after the funeral Mark, you you just like get this glimpse into Marcus's life a little bit more, and I think that this is the episode that Sid visits him when he's got to like close his mom's house, like um like he's selling it or packing up or some shit. That sounds right. But like um that like precedes the conversation. I well, think. yeah, he just like continues to have these like really crazy looking dishes like on his table. Yeah, he's and super we never committed. really see them on. T- the tables, you know? Well, it's because we know that he doesn't work fast, though. That's his whole problem. Yes, exactly. He has the right ambition and creativity, but he doesn't have the speed level as everybody. You have to be able to create quickly. He's able to create, but he's not able to do it at a high enough level yet. Yeah. Um, they also rehire old staff from... So, in the flashbacks to the old original beef with mikey there was like oh i loved that there was like those two other guys that work there yeah one of the guys drops off something earlier in the season two. earlier in the season yeah and then well they're the ones who say like the this is running like shit all the locals are pissed um (laughs) and so they they bring those guys back and it's good that they showed them a couple other times and in the backstory they basically worked with richie to run the shop and now they're back and then that's really it Maybe he wasn't making money until then, you know? Well, it was running horribly with the dude by himself. He had, yeah. he could not handle it at all. It was bad. But how could you? How can you ring people and make all the food? No matter what, that's a disaster. Yeah. It's not really a thing, to be honest. It's not possible. Right. You can do that at, like, Dairy Queen. And that's a disaster. <laughs> yeah, it's still not easy. <laughs> Especially if there's a drive through um, Fuck that. And that's when they also... That's when they really show... Uh, Sydney just being very clearly frustrated with Carmi entirely, and they're just sprinkling the seed even more that she's really considering leaving. And then it ends with uh, Claire Bear popping the water at Restaurant Depot. Yeah, dude. Getting fucking Seafolds. The name of the episode should have been Seafolds. You know? And nobody Star. answered their phone, dude. And guess who had to show up? Fucking Jamie legend. Lee. The f- I don't buy that no one answers the phone either. They Not put, one of them. Right, right. Especially with the pregnant lady going I to get I get it because there's service, I guess. Yeah. They're all in their locker. Weird. Is that what we're implying? That is what they're implying. You know what? I and thought for no, a second. No, but they also did say that the restaurant itself doesn't have a phone. Remember? That is correct. So there was no way for her to call. It does add up. Yeah. But I will say. Well, he would have fucking screamed at him if, if you know, Carly yeah. would be very upset. But I'm saying, like, nobody followed up after. Right. Which... Well, no, they did. It's implied that they did, I think. Then is it? Yeah, because she's going into labor, like, at the beginning of service. And by the time service is over, the husband is already there. I'm talking about everybody else. I know, I know, but like, it's implied that they find out after service. How? I don't know, because the next day happens. And when does she ever talk to anybody else? She hasn't yet. That's my point. On screen. But no, I mean, the the husband's, what's his name? He's going to tell them, you know? And like, no, 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 that's not true. The facts, or they didn't show up. Nobody oh, showed nobody up. nobody showed up. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't even realize that, nobody dude. Nobody showed up or talked to her the rest of the season. That's weird. That's so weird. So, anyway, uh, let's let's go through the episode, though. That's so fucked up. <laughs> so I didn't realize that. She's unable to reach her husband, and then nobody in the restaurant calls because they're all in service. She calls Jamie Lee Curtis, her mom. God. 
who shows up and actually is able to help her, which is surprising, and she's not that crazy. I thought what was going to happen was... Um, she was going to go crazy. <laughs> well, no, she kept saying, like, did you call my husband? And she kept saying, yeah, yeah. I, I, thought, she lied. I thought they were implying that she was lying and was just being psycho. Yep, same. Which wasn't the case. <laughs> and she does reveal, she's like, I've been working on myself, which is enough. Great, again, I love it. You don't got to go deep into everything. She's been living her life this whole time, so maybe she has been working on it finally. Right. Yeah. That's always something to consider. And it basically does say, like, okay, Carmi's the only one left in this entire show who hasn't, hasn't worked changed. on themselves Yeah, at all. dude. Even the mom, that's true. Even he never mom. calls his mom. <laughs> well, he shouldn't. She's fucked up. Well, no, that's the whole thing. She's trying, you know? No, but he just needs to, he needs to work on himself. He doesn't need to call his mom. Part of that is calling his mom, I think. Man. That's way down the road, though. I'm just <laughs> I guess, saying yeah. baby steps here, man. Yeah, man, just, like, get through service. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, be able to say sorry to somebody. <laughs> well, I mean, granted, he's still making meticulously constructed new menus every day, so it takes a lot of time. I get it. It's good food. Yeah, but he's yeah he's pushing his I life it. away to I get do it. it. I get yeah. it. <laughs> I know. I know the whole show. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Right, right. <laughs> but, like, I get it. Um, anyway, Pete finally does show up and while well, she also confesses to her mom before he shows up that she's like, yeah, I'm worried that I'm going to be like you basically. <laughs> and her mom's like, yeah, you kind of should, but like, you're not like me. Like you'll be fine, which is yeah. nice. And then, uh, Pete finally shows up and that's it. Pete, there you go. Oh, that is the facts are there. At the they end. do show up, yeah. They are with Donna. Yes, yes. When she gets to the lobby, they show up. So they do find out. It's at least implied that the facts did something, right? But it nobody else shows up or ever talks to her again. No, but um, <laughs> the next episode, Sid does go out there because that's when she finds out the salary of the other the original partnership. She brings them that is fucking food. True. Yeah, but then nobody else. I don't Carmi think. and Richie is the point that I'm trying. That is, to make. The, I understand that that's the point you're trying to make because that sucks. They're the family, right? Like that's that's the open thing that maybe we'll get to later. Um. Anyway, oh, for sure, they dragged that out. That's why they never touched upon it. You know, we're gonna right. have to deal with that all next. Also, season, probably. the whole thing with Pete. It's just like, yeah, we get it that he's like, it's weird that he's like dumb, but he's not. I just don't like him at all. I don't really either. Like, I he's feel aloof. Like, That's I, the thing. But I feel like he's supposed to be like comic relief that, oh, he's like kind of dumb, but he's just so, he's just like ignorant. Well, he's, he's not even just like lo he's not like lovably stupid. He's just like lacks awareness in all situations completely, but not in an adoring way. I thought that they it's were like just irritating. They were making him like funnier, like the f earlier in the show, and now because of the reality of being a dad, he's like confused and also kind of dumb. You know, like he doesn't really know what he's gonna do. I don't think know? he's changed that. I feel like he's pr he's been the same way the whole time. Well, no, right. Work. I just think they kind of like. Hit the way but then that the his fact that he, he's now. also supposed to be this like financial guy because he can read a contract for Sid, so he is smart. Like that doesn't make sense. He's a money guy. They're not good at talking <laughs> or being a dad. I don't know. Well, we're gonna find out. It doesn't add up to me at all. Just that that character just seems underdeveloped. It's yeah. I'm not really a fan of him. No. Um, the facts try to get Carmi to apologize to Claire while they're out in the dumpster and he basically just blows that off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is that the end of that next episode? Nope, starting a new one. We're mo moving forward, is this, bud. Sorry, which one is this? Episode 8? 9? We're moving forward, bud. This is episode 9? No, I'm lying. <laughs> he does blow it off, but then fucking he revisit. I mean, he um, what the fuck does he do? Try, try to move it forward. <laughs> oh, you want to move it forward? Go, go right ahead. <laughs> Nine. Uh, so next, he that is when he invites her officially to go to the final ever service because she's not invited, just he's invited. Yes. And so that's not kind a of funeral, just a restaurant service. So that is kind of him being like, hey. I love you, dude. Olive Branch, like yes, didn't forget about you. Like 
I'm just kind of doing my thing here, you know, like. It's kind of a way of him letting you know, like, hey, I'm like, you're still my partner. Like, I, you know, I'm out of control. <laughs> like, yeah. what else can we do here? But doesn't ever actually say it. Uh, and they're also anticipating the Tribune review because it's due at any moment now that the photo shoot and everything happened. Um, And that's also when Cicero reiterates, like, hey, man, if this review isn't good, like, we might We're just go out. out of business pretty much. Yeah. Like, he said that he's going to, he's done. This is pretty much going to make or break the restaurant. Service is still not going very well, but it's getting better. Because of Richie. Because of Richie, that's correct. Um, he, He's got, like, this love interest in that girl at Ever, too, and you're like, ooh, uh, is something going to happen? That didn't happen yet, but <laughs> yes, you're right. And that is definitely going to happen. <laughs> She's going to be the date to his wife's wedding. Yeah, yeah, 100%, that's real. 100%. That's, real. Um, that's stupid. He shouldn't go. So, th- oh, this is when he has the conversation with Tiff, his ex, about going to his wedding, and he's like, I don't want to go. And she's basically like, I don't give a fuck, man. Like, do this for our kid. Like, right. we need to seem good for our kid. And we are good. Like, you've come a long way here. Like, you clearly understand that we're not getting back together finally. Right. And we can actually talk to each other, all this shit. Right. They're finally in a good place. And she's right. Yeah. If you're actually in a good spot, then yeah, he should come. Like, if it were still, if it were toxic or something and you're just trying to force him to come, that's a whole other story. That's true. That is, yeah, that was a good conversation that they had, too, I feel like. Um, And then the restaurant is obviously closed, so they can all go to the Ever Dinner, and that is when both Marcus and Tina pull up while it's closed, like, without, just by chance, they both happen to do it because they're both clearly very committed and just trying to work on shit. So that's always, like, really cool to see. Again, because think about, like, how little everybody cared about everything back when it was just a beef sandwich shop and now they're coming in on their day off to like experiment with dishes and all this shit. Yeah. So like the place really technically is in the right trajectory. Like they have the right people in the right mindset and all that. Um that is next when Sydney next is when Sydney delivers the food to them and finds out that Carmi's giving less money and less benefits, which yeah. Like you said, it's not that much less. And the fact that she wouldn't understand. OK, this is where I think we have the real like we agree that this is a huge error here. She knew that that place was fucking funded with money from tomato cans. <laughs> she knew that they would have to go even deeper into debt with yep. just some guy named Jimmy Cicero. <laughs> To open the it, mob. to open it into the bear. So she knew. They also all in the second season deferred their pay because that's what you have to do to open a place. She yep. knew all of well, this stuff. You don't and normally. I think that's probably comp for ownership stakes. Car- the partners oh, agreed, agreed. The partners, a hundred percent. Um, so she knew all of that and did all of that and was willing to do all of that. And was completely aware of Did everything. Did it without signing a dotted line for already a long and time. And admitted skepticism in doing so, but did it for commitment. When and it now, was a beef shack. And now is all of a sudden surprised that she's not that she would be getting more money from someone who's at an established restaurant starting a new one with more money behind him without a prior debt. It's pretty clear that he would have a better offer. Right. Like... To me, that's the biggest Head scratch for if sure. Anything, if anything, the differences should have been way bigger. Like right. she goes, benefits, his are from the start. Yours are 90 days. And then she goes like, we might just not even make it to not, to when I get like, If I live that long, it's like, dude, well, shut no, the fuck up. She meant up. the restaurant because she knows that it might close. Oh, I thought she but meant I'm her just saying, like, like, sarcastically. But yeah. If you know that it might close, that means that you have your answer. Exactly. You know, like you shouldn't be worried about the benefits not being able to kick in. You would just be out of a job. Who get like ninety days is fine. You're still gonna get benefits. So that whole like that's just such a weird little nitpick to me. Right. Where it's like, yeah, if you're a partner in the place, you expect to be there for years anyway. So like, I don't even see the thing there. Especially yeah. when you currently don't have any insurance and you and the place has been open. And like you ju- again. Uh, the biggest thing is what you brought up. Like you just signed a new lease. You moved out of your dad's apartment. 
or house, but whatever. Again, like, also, how do you not know? If it's been open for even <laughs> right. one month at this point, that means you're getting closer to having your insurance kick in. Has you just signed the fucking contract? Yeah, and I feel like this <laughs> like, this whole episode that episode nine really leans into her story, and I'm like, I could care less. I really could care less about this whiny baby. <laughs> See, to me, it's more so like. If she's that willing to just bail, then let her fucking bail. Like, what was the whole point of building all this up? Yeah. Just for some guy we don't know either. Like, if that character from ever had, like, more of a backstory in the show, it would mean more. But if she's just willing to just go fucking leave for this guy, yeah, 10 more grand a year, I'd take that raise right now. You know, I'm not trying to poo-poo it. But right, if we're gonna right. act, if we're gonna <laughs> if we're gonna act like that's some substantially way better right. offer, like it just isn't. If it was seventy to a hundred, you know, yeah, you fu- you or, you sign with that other guy without even reading anything else. Like, what do you? Well, talk? no, you don't even talk to Carmi first. You sign it, then talk to him. If it's thirty grand more, like exactly. The uh, okay, realistically, right? I think. The other, the other little thing that I think that happens in this episode is that uncle, what Jimmy Cicero? I don't even know if his name is Jimmy, <laughs> but it's Cicero for sure. He realizes at some point before they're about to get the review, and before he told Carmi, or maybe or during the same time he's telling Carmi, like I'm gonna pull out. He's realized that Sid is might be this potential partner, you know, is really good at her job. Technically, I think that Cicero would find a way to recoup his money by keeping her around and making sure that she was the person that was getting paid out. If she was the one that was going to make the money and the one that was so good and like this like sought after chef, like that's a part of the uh, a reason why I think that you, the whole that you're saying makes oh, sense. Yeah, <laughs> right. I forgot about that factor that you can negotiate a contract. Also, right. it's hey, just... I need 10 more grand a year and my benefits to start up front. Right. Okay. So what you yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we're I did honestly we're expected to believe that, that nobody else knows about this failing business and are trying to save this business and aren't aware that maybe this one chef who is very clearly frustrated every single night with the head chef isn't getting other offers. You know, like that also just wouldn't happen. They're all so close in proximity all the time and they're always seeing each other and they're the best of friends. Like, there's no way. But you know? she's not really in the circle like that. She's at service every night, man. She has no choice. But that's what I'm saying. So nobody would know about her like that. Nobody would know how to find I her. I think that visually, by the way, she's acting in the middle of service. By the way, Carmen, like, you know, the way she had to react to Carmen all the time, like, it's obvious. It was obvious. I think. That's just my take. What do you mean? That she's had a bunch of offers? No, that she's thinking about leaving in the first place. Well, yeah, of course that's obvious. Yeah, and I guess that's a, you know. (laughs) What do you mean? Yeah, they've been building towards that the whole season. Does it seem apparent to you that Carmen realizes it too? No, he has no idea what's going on. He's he's completely absorbed in his own world. Right. He doesn't know what he's doing to anybody. We'll get there. That's we'll a good get, point. We'll get there to the lo- in the last episode. They, I feel like they point. That they out do drive quick. it home. Yeah, they do. Just really like drive the it home. the AA meeting, they basically do the same thing again. Right. Um. Uh, you get you really then, get those glitches. Those and then things. the last part that we left out, the facts go to the hospital and tell Claire that Carmi wants her back. And, yes. And <laughs> I love how many times. Didn't really need it. How many times Maddie has said, I'm his best friend. <laughs> yeah. Throughout this thing, even though they probably, I think at the dumpster was maybe the only time they spoke to each other the whole, the whole season. Yep. <laughs> like they didn't talk ever. And he's like, yeah, he's my best friend. Um, so that's great. And yeah, the, that went on a little too long, that scene. But it, it's nice that they went there. I think they needed to do it just to set up their their like she's obviously going to be in the fourth season, and yeah. they're they're obviously going to tie this they're up. Be happy, uh, happily ever after. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not. Um, but yeah, he's going to call her at some point. You know, they're alluding to him doing it or not doing it throughout the whole thing. Yes. Even in the first episode, they it's like, who's he calling? Oh, he's calling Richie. Right. You know, like so they do all that. He's stuff. literally got his thumb on the trigger on his phone uh, in that ninth episode. I'm pretty sure. Right. Um. But basically, I mean, they are right. 
what they say to her. They're like, he wants to say he's sorry, and he wants to say he loves you, but he can't. Right. He's just being him. But, like, the shit he said to her, I mean, just brutal. It was an accident, too. It is kind of her fault. Right. I mean, it's his fault. You shouldn't say that out loud, period. But she shouldn't have been there. Right. (laughs) Technically. Right. Technically, she should not have been there. Yeah, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. Can't Um, handle the heat. Get out of the kitchen, lady. So now we're on episode 10. This episode was too long, number one. They dragged the fuck Was it out a of longer running time? Uh, the le- Like four of the episodes this season went over. They went to like 40 minutes. Yeah, you got to stop doing that. No, not true. The first, yeah. the first episode was 40 minutes. Too long. No, it wasn't. It was perfect. We St- just gushed over it. Stressful. In this episode, you I gushed over it. I get it, I get it. it. Uh, so now this one, they're at the closing of Ever. But I do think that it was too long, yeah. I agree. So this one, we're at the closing of Ever. Richie just spends time in the back with his old homies from Forks, the previous no, season. No, with his girlfriend. <laughs> well, but the other dude, too, the Asian guy. Well, it's not actually his girlfriend. I was just kidding. Like, he really, like, Thanks. admires her, you know? Like, he's, like, sitting on the table like a little baby. <laughs> yeah, he has a crush on her very clearly. But he also is talking to the other, the Asian guy who trained him. Right, right, right. So, y- yes. Uh <laughs> That anyway, <laughs> uh, Carmi finally talks to Will Poulter, where and they also revealed this season. They confirmed this season that those guys work together multiple times. Oh, that was sweet. Yeah, uh, and they finally talk. He was so funny. Uh, Sydney talks to him, and they get along really well. And they basically just bounce around and show fake chefs talking with real chefs. Uh, Grant Atchitz, number one. I think it's on Atkins. the board. I don't. Hair. <laughs> Number one on the board. Dude, that was awesome. Uh yeah. Basically Will Poulter just talks his ear off and fangirls to him. And yes. he's just like, Yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> yep. Uh because you shouldn't. They're all supposed to be peers there, so that would be annoying. Well, yeah, by the end of it he was like, I gotta go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh so that was pretty funny. Um and then we finally, after way too much time, get to the point where after seeing Joel McHale across the restaurant, he finally goes and talks to him. After about, there, there's like that 10 minute stretch where they just go around the table and they're all just telling kitchen stories. Listen, I get it. You wanted to get real chefs to tell real stories in the show to make it more authentic. It's That's good. great. Completely derails the pacing of what's supposed to be the series finale. Should have found a way to put this somewhere else. A hundred percent. I was like, can we just get on with it, please? Like, the whole thing is they're impatient, I, you know? I'm invested in the bear. I don't give a fuck about what these people have to say, and nope. the stories weren't that interesting, really. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but I did not like that at all. So then he finally confronts Joel McHale, which was electric. This is what we've all been waiting for. This is a, a finale moment. And I love it right away. Mikhail's like, he says his name wrong on purpose. That was awesome. Like, I don't really remember you. It was uh, like Beerzato or something. Well, that's pretty much what his name is. He was like Berezini or something. Yeah, yep. Um, and Fucking dick. And he's just like, <laughs> he was just like, yeah, I have really thought that I'd have a lot more to say to you. And he's like, well, what do you have to say? And he's like, fuck you. And he's like, that's it? Great. I got to pee. <laughs> and then Carmi finally like comes up with what he's going to actually say. And this was the point I was making at the beginning of the podcast. Carmi goes, you're a fucking asshole. You ruined my life. And he's like, nope, I got you to where you are right now. You're here with me because of me. And he's like, what? And that's what I'm saying. I don't understand how he'd be shocked by that. Right. I understand how he would have been almost like Stockholm syndromed by it to where, yes, if he cut everything else out of his life and that place is only his life and that's the only way he's being spoken to, that that will eventually get in, into your brain as a, like, I am a piece of shit. I guess I get that point that, like, he was damaged by it. But for him to not acknowledge that it was on purpose, I just don't see how he could be that naive. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a good The fact that Joel McHale point. had to say those words out loud, I yeah. feel like 
I knew that from episode one when right. they showed it. I also think that part of it is like he, season one. Episode. Like Carmi is not like a a chef like Joel McHale in the fact that he just takes his work home with him too much. You know, he got it, it got too into his head. And you're, right. to your point, you're right. It, it is kind of Stockholm syndrome. And he did just break in that moment. I'm sure that like, oh, really? But, but like. It's still, like, to your point, it doesn't make sense because he was able to do all the things that he already had been able to do bef- up until that point. That's you know? what I'm saying. Like, he would he have already been able to he's handle also, it. He's also not smoking. He's not drinking. He's on this whole clean path. I think he would have had the realization sooner for sure. But but again, I do think the Mikey trauma is tied big. with it. That's the biggest. That's, that's what I was trying problem. to say. Yeah, like the fact that, you know, it just like everything he that you said earlier, he can't separate them sure. from each other. Right. So that's why I he think he associates it with the death of his brother, and it's a really Im- re- important reason why he probably puts blame on that And I think that's that basically shop. what the resentment is. Like I was getting called a piece of shit by you when my brother was. I was getting calls that my brother was dead. Right. And that's really what it is. But he just needed to hear the words. He basically needed to hear Joel McHale say, "Like, I don't think you're a piece of shit," and he did in so many words. Yeah. That's yeah, true. that guy is a dick. Right. He clearly he's is just an, a dick without this whole thing yeah, happening. Yeah, he's an you know? arrogant asshole. Right. But he also is very good and skilled and talented. But also, in terms of being like... Not anymore. They implied it, too. Right. Like, but I'm saying, like, anymore. I don't think that he is, like, mean. I think he's just an arrogant dick. And I think the kitchen thing is just his technique. Right. That he's that type of chef. I don't, but I don't think he's mean because if he were just mean, he could have just blown Carmi off. Right. But he th- responded thoughtfully. It wasn't, again, it wasn't nice, but he wasn't being mean. He was just being honest. They also slowly revealed the dialogue that was happening with them when they were in the kitchen. And you realize later in the season that, like, he wasn't just calling him an asshole the whole time. He was. Trying to make him better, what you're saying. The things were actual improvements. Right. Like, right. you're not going fast enough. You need to do this. That's too much this. Like, whatever. Right. And but I also like, think he's that basically they... saying if you want to be at the highest level, like, you got to operate and think as quickly as the way, as as quickly as I'm putting you down. But I also think that the, the point that they're trying to make, too, throughout a lot of that dialogue is that you don't have to be that kind of person to be the best chef. You no. Know? That 100%. is hundred percent. That is definitely what they're saying. By the fact that he's not a happening chef anymore. By the fact that you know, well, and in a way, it seemed like he looked up to, like Carmi looked up to him in a weird way. Well, of course he did. He looked up to all of them. But that's also why they're juxtaposing all of the positive kitchen experiences he had with, with that this. One. Right. That right. this one just had it such just a negative it. impact on it. That it ruined all of those positive ones. It even right. ruined, and that's why they also start cutting back to him with Sid when they agreed it would be a partnership and that it would be different this time, and that he's straying away from it and becoming Joel McHale. And they juxtapose it with here you had an opportunity to not be like him, but you're being like him instead, even though you hate him and you don't want to be like him right and you learn from all these other people who do it differently in the right way and you are your own worst enemy here right yeah dude that's like what... you turned into what you hate they're both really like thinking about it again now they both soured it for themselves like their relationship they both fucked it up in their own ways and sid wouldn't have done what she's doing now if he would have stuck to the fucking plan you know, for sure. That's so, what I'm saying. Like, Carmi is at fault in terms of Carmi and yeah, Sydney. Yeah, but he's, all, sure. he's at fault, and he's at the same time almost the reason why they're all there, and it's like... That's it's right. It's the weirdest well, that's way the to thing. handle that it, That is too. why he can... That is why he is so much like Joel McHale, because that's what, I'm, that's what I was explaining earlier. He did so much for all of those people to bring them up, and he did it while being a raging lunatic. Right. Now, Mikhail's an emotionless lunatic, but Carmi just does the same thing, but with anger. Right. But, yeah, it, it's tough. It, it really does a great job of showing just how difficult that balance is because, like, wh- like he is doing he is making it. Right. But, but then, but then. That's when the dude pulls Sydney into the cooler. I was like, hey, come on. And here's the thing, though. That guy's right. 
She's leaving both of these people fucking dangling here. Yep. Carmi doesn't know it, so he doesn't care. She's leading everybody on, even that other guy, you know? <laughs> yeah, but that's right. If I'm that guy, he's like, yeah, it's been a couple weeks. Like, what do you know? And she's like, yep, still thinking about it. If I'm that guy in that moment, I'd be like, you got to let me know by like Friday. Yeah. Like, still be nice about it. But he's just like, okay, well, let me he's know. Like, it's being like, a thing now. He's like, I'm looking at like spaces to lease out. Like, we're going to build the kitchen pretty soon. Right. Like, right. And she's just like, okay, I'll still take my time. It's like, how do you. How does a chef not have a sense of urgency? Exactly. You know? Like, exactly. Make a fucking move. Yeah, it's rough. Because that was the end of it. I was like, I don't really care about what you do at this point, to be honest, dude. <laughs> you know? And the fact that she's like, oh, really? It's like, you're at the last service of ever. He works at ever. He needs, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah. needs a fucking job. Like, like That's also part of the reason why he probably did how it. How does she not need a job? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. It's absurd. It's absurd that she would just leave it dangling like that. Um, and then a lot that's of the, when the, the chef of ever yeah. talks to Carmi, and they have a great talk though, yeah. where she's basically like, "I don't know." Yeah, <laughs> she's basically like, "I feel just how you feel. You're on the same path I went on right now." Yep. And and it's fucking, good that that happened because if not, he was really not. You know, not feeling great after that fucking conversation with that asshole. So it's like to have a nice, uplifting, you know, motivating conversation with one of your old bosses is the least you can have. You know, at least you can ask for the closing of a restaurant. Absolutely. You know, and because she's also done with it, too. So I don't know what he was expecting to hear from her. I don't know if he was. I thought he was ready for more bad news, you know, like more negativity about the path that he's on. But I'm glad that she said what she said, you know, like it's okay to be unsure of what's about to happen, you know? Right. Because of the financial part, too. You're thinking about that the whole time, you know? That's, it seems like you are. <laughs> you're, you, <laughs> your anxiety about money consciousness, I think, just, just, it's crazy. just really pushed to it's the edge. It's crazy. Well, because you just see so much more of the uncle in those last few. It feels like he's like, preying on them he starts showing up more it's like weird you're like get out of here dude let them do her th- their thing they're in debt to him i know I debtors know. need to collect <laughs> <laughs> that's how that works <gasps> i mean he is also like family adjacent and all that stuff too so it's not like put on a suit and get in service mr i need money that guy wouldn't be able to do <laughs> he can work the beef window yeah that's probably true right um and yeah and i feel like so it's going to a point where either Carmi's basically either going to learn to go the other way or he's going to double down. And you know what I mean? Like they're alluding to. Oh, like he's just going to be an asshole all the time. Yes. He's either going to be the like dictator, severe, harsh head chef forever. And it's going to go that way. Or he's going to finally open up and learn everything that he should have learned that they're throwing in our face on the show where it's like the answers are all right in front of you, dude. Like, don't be like the guy who ruined your life. Right. And I feel like they're basically I feel like it's basically like however it goes with Claire is however it's going to go in the restaurant. Yep. And that's what it's heading towards. And then. Oh, I don't like that. That means that what what I think is going to happen with their happily ever after might not even come true at all. And then that's so rough. They have a party at Sydney's and they all have fun with frozen food, which uh, another side that I love to show is how much like chefs don't give a fuck about what's in their fridge. (laughs) Well, and they but like not even the fact that Sydney was embarrassed. The opposite. The fact that the chef was ever was like, I fucking love Tombstone. Yeah. Because what are you eating? You're coming home late at night, throwing something in. And on top of that, like that shit is good. That's what I hate. Facts. I, people that are pretentious about restaurants are the people that eat at them and think that they're better than shit. Chefs right. are not like that at all. Another Chefs reason why McDonald's. Sid's character is not fun. She's right. like, oh my God, don't look at my fridge. She's right. like, bro, we're starving. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're telling me Anthony Bourdain, like, that guy was always like, drink a fucking high life and have a tamale. Like, you know what I mean? Like, For sure. That's what it's all about. So then they go there and then... This is when the montage happens, and Sid basically has a breakdown, and 
Yeah, I get it. You hate her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then she has a breakdown and basically is like, wow, the same things we've been discussing. Where I'm at is because of Carmi, positively and negatively. He took everything so far and we've all come so far, but I want to fucking leave because he's also the reason that I'm miserable. And basically this whole show is just like, at what point in your restaurant career are you? And it's the same, no matter what. Yeah. Like, the lady at Ever was exactly where Carmi's at, and where Sid was at, and where Richie, you, you know what I mean? They're all just at a different stage, but the, to be at the, like, Michelin level that these people are at, it's all one experience. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's kind of interesting to just watch everybody be at basically just a different point of the same story. That's very interesting. That's a hot take, for sure. I, I like that perspective. And then, I lastly, think that's a good way to cap that season off. You like really lastly, are feeling it. Yeah, the big the kicker, which I think I saw coming the whole time. Reviews out. It's mid. Cicero's whole thing. Well, they're, he's having those flashes throughout the season. Yeah. Of good review, good review, bad review, bad review, good review. Like, what could it be? Right. And then it's basically just like, yeah, some of it's really great, some of it's not that great. It's like the worst option is a mid review. Right. I was under the impression that it was a bad review. No, because there were, like, positives in it. You think so? They showed it on screen. I it's a weird thing to ask an opinion of. <laughs> 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 yes, I think so. Right on. Let me see how it is described in the, in the recap. <laughs> to his anger, the review is mixed. Yeah. That's okay. not negative. That's mixed. Mixed is not good. Mixed means some are good, some are bad. I get, I get what you're. I get your point. I think that mixed is bad though to him. You know, the guy wanted a good one. Yeah, if you twist words around, then yes, you're correct. <laughs> but <laughs> we're saying the same thing. Yes, the review was disappointing uh, because the restaurant is now basically at risk of closing. So they say. Now, if we're just gonna be real about one thing, the Chicago Tribune food review doesn't mean anything to anybody. Who the fuck is reading the Chicago Tribune? You can't click on any of their articles unless you have an internet subscription to their Awful. thing. I've so, never read a Chicago Tribune food review. That's exactly my point. Printed in front of me. So I don't think anybody gives a fuck about them specifically, <laughs> but that's not really the point that they're trying to make. No. You're um, right. So we're going on almost two hours here. So, real quickly, we have thir 13 minutes or less to say, say what did you think and what's going to happen season four? Go. But wait, I want to ask you one Jesus thing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you think that Anthony Bourdain would watch this show if he was alive? That's a dumb question. Is it? Would he watch it? Of course. Do you think he would like it? He would praise it. Oh, that's He would it. call it the most accurate portrayal of a kitchen that I've ever seen on screen because that's what it is. He would be on it if he were alive at some point. What do that, you mean? That's real. I'm just, I was wondering what you thought. I what thought. a silly, but what do you think? He would have hated it? He wouldn't uh, no, have liked I, it? No, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I mean, agree. of course he would have liked yeah. it. It's a great show. It's basically Kitchen Confident. Like, the first season is Kitchen Confidential. Um, I think that the third season was, by and large... Uh, you know, it was like for two episodes out of the ten for me to be crying through most of it. I just think it's like my favorite season of the three. Okay, I feel like it's going to be received a little differently. I feel like some people aren't really it going to be into it as much. But that's just fatigue. Um, it's yeah, not that's based real. On the right stuff. And like, I get it. I think that you know, you kind of talked about like the filler feel for some of those episodes. I get it. I definitely feel that same way for some of them. But that's what shows are like. But that's exactly, exactly. That's, yeah. Shows are meant to have, like, I just, I also really love, this is my favorite episode, or favorite season because it fucked with the pace of the show every episode in its own way. And it was really fun to feel those jumps and then not feel them for a little bit. They did it a little bit in two. They did, like, the, you know, the that Christmas episode, The Seven Fishes, right? Isn't that what that one's yep. called? Like though that time jump was super fun, but really like they didn't do it a lot until this one, and right. it was super fucking fun. Right, because it also makes it's disorienting, just like being trapped exactly. in that cycle. It's like, oh, has t twenty days gone by, or has this been one shift? I have no exactly. idea. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, 
And like, I mean, to your point, I the money stuff stressed me out a lot just because I, I love the uncle coming in. and. But there's just no stakes to it. It's just fake. And um, I... <laughs> Like the, in, to begin with, they're like, "Yeah, you're half a million in debt. Cool, I'll put another three hundred thousand into this." It's like, "Let's get okay. another twenty five hundred dollars." Let's just file butter. for bankruptcy and then it's all fine. Yeah, like, this is the dumbest it, idea ever. You know what I mean? I, I, the I, figures I, are just too re- unrealistic. I loved it because it almost like it. It was like a. It's like a make believe dramatic. But there's no actual pressure on anybody because Carmi hasn't responded to it at all. Right. You know, if there were, if he fa- like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, if there. There are real stakes in that the restaurant would just close, but he doesn't respond to them. And he thinks he's like, stop spending money or we're going to close. And then he just goes, we'll just get a good review and then we'll be fine. But it's like the the, now you get the point. Yeah. So I think that for, you know, happily ever after with Claire, I think that he's going to quit the restaurant and then he's going to put Sid in charge. Oh, that's interesting. And I think that, um, you know, there is not much that we're going to do about this ever offer. I think that um, she's just going. It's just not going to happen. Episode one, she's just going to call him and be like, "Hey, I decided to si- stay with the pair." Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And they'll just blow it off. Yeah, yep. I could see that happening. I think that you know, uh, that's really that's all I'm going to keep it at. I don't really care about any of the other storylines, to okay. be honest. Yeah, I mean, well, because is, everybody that works the there is going to stay there. It's the so, only, but it was the only storyline. Right. That's what we said as we talked about. There was no real. That was there was one storyline. Yep. They need a review, and Sydney might leave. Yep. That's it. That's it. Um. And to be honest, I'm saying it again. I don't like Sid's character. I think that she should, you know, make up your goddamn mind. Yeah, you're the only one in that boat. Um, right on. I would say I would say season two was much better, not much better, but season two was better for me. The highs were higher and there were less lows like the lows were higher. If that makes sense. Um, Yeah. But this season, this season is the hardest one for them to make because season one came with zero expectations. Season two came with high expectations, but increase in interest and budget and time and availability and all of the like all new resources so they had a lot more to do now season three was about maintaining season two's resources and quality it's just about maintenance and that's just a way harder thing to do um you know it's kind of like your debut records like all your old ideas and then your second ones like the creative one and then your third one's the like well we're rich and famous here's music about being rich and famous that's kind of where they're at so that's a great analogy i think i may have heard that and stole that there's a chance right on we'll but find out what it is and let you know it would have been on the watch andy greenwald shout out okay love that guy you love heard it show. about the bear no i think it was yeah oh okay those are very it's very talented people out there doing a lot of things like this justice right on uh <laughs> i'm not gonna be the only one putting out a podcast about this show i hate to break it to you right on that makes um sense. but i would say yeah, it, it's still a, high, a higher level than season one. There's a whole lot more going on. Again, the highs are super high. Like, episode one was breathtaking for me. The Tina episode was excellent. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm sta- I'm sitting there with this sh- stupid fucking smile on my face, just f- amped up. I love being with these characters, and that hasn't changed. They've continued. Like I said, all they've done is make everybody more likable except Carmi and Sid because they're in the middle of a bunch of shit. Yep. Um, but it was great. Yeah, I loved it. As far as season four goes, again, this show has been unpredictable the whole time, really. Right. Um, which Agreed. is good. Not not that they've really thrown any curveballs either. It just goes like, oh, I didn't really think about that possibility. <laughs> or, or like I said, like something like you said with. Uh, potentially her just bailing on ever really quickly they do that a lot where it's like ah, oh, you thought this was going to be a whole thing nah yeah we'll just move right on right um the way i can see it going is he tries to talk to claire fumbles the bag oh my god like just can't say the right thing and just makes her more upset or they have a nice, honest talk, and she's just like, I appreciate all this, and I forgive you, but nah, like, I'm it. not coming back. Like That was crazy and all that. Right. 
Some I think no matter I think they don't end up together. I think Sydney leaves forever. Get it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, <laughs> the, but I that's think, really good. but I think the bear pulls through. Right. They become profitable. Whatever. 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 And she's bitter to the bitter end. No. <laughs> it works out. Oh. Maybe Richie even leaves and goes and joins them. Oh. And I think slowly, piece by piece, everyone leaves. Oh. And he's alone oh with a whole God. new, like an entire new kitchen, and he's crushing it. And they have stars and whatever, but he just never breaks out of it, and everybody leaves. Damn. And then the show ends. That'd be fucked up. That's my prediction. That's a hot take. Book it. Hey, if you made it two fucking hours into my hot take. You deserve you it. Deser- yeah, exactly. <laughs> it took fucking long enough. Oh, boy. So, the bear. We love the show. <laughs> Hands. This might be the longest episode of this show. Like, we've definitely done two hour episodes, but then broken it into two parts, I think. Yeah. You're going to do this all in one. Oh, this is one. Yeah. <laughs> we've maybe done one other two hour episode. That would be it. Was it maybe Denis? two? May no, it would have been with you or if not other like several other people. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it's a great show. I'd have you know? to go through it, but there's maybe one or two other episodes this long, so that's a treat. Uh, that's the all star treatment for the best show on television. Facts. Um, if they did film back to back, then they will certainly. Honestly, what would be hard as fuck is if they did surprise drop in on like Thanksgiving or Christmas for season four. It that's a tall task. You well, call that? I wish wit, we well, could put money on. But that. I mean, they were filming in spring, and it's out now, so they can turn around episodes that quickly. I just don't know if like Hulu is going to want to hold it. Like if they truly did back to back, they'll be done soon. Right. So I mean, if it if they're done, I would love it if it came out earlier. I think that would be really smart on their part, especially if it'll be the last season on top of that, or even if it won't. And then they could still have the fifth season then come out in June. and fi- You know what I mean? Like, a lot of possibilities to how that could go. Uh, but if it is the final season and they've already filmed it, it should just come out sooner. Thanksgiving would be huge. I just wish we've run into Jeremy Allen White before. He's always walking around here. I thought that they were filming it near my work, but they were filming something else, I think. But I never saw one actor in general, seemingly. Damn. But they were there for a minute. Uh, yeah, I know. I would love to run into that guy. Yeah. I'd probably rather... He's a Brooklyn guy. Yeah, that's the thing. I'd probably rather like to run into... Richie? No, Io. Oh, nice. Just because she's, like, younger. Yeah. And she's, like, a comedian and stuff. I feel like I could talk to her a lot easier. That's crazy that she directed that episode. She's very talented. That's fucking sick. That's what I'm saying. The show can only last so much longer. These people aren't going to be able to fucking accept the checks anymore. <laughs> you know what I <laughs> oh mean? Oh, my like, God. All right. Cheap uh, shows. Huh? So that was The Bear Season 3. We did a Season 1 episode, a Season 2 episode. Check those all out. Check every fucking thing we got out. Links in the description below. Rate, review, subscribe, share. Requiem for a Tuesday everywhere all the time fuck yeah i'm exhausted this episode is over thanks for tuning in and remember i are fat you are fat we are fat calculator chef see ya wait i want to talk about (laughs) i want to talk about for one minute let's see if i can get through kinds of kindness go i here's the thing (laughs) ladies and gentlemen when this episode hits two hours it will end no matter how far he gets. Go. Okay. All right. Emma Stone. <laughs> Willem Dafoe. Jesse Plemons. You love Jesse Plemons. You got to you gotta see. I feel like you would really enjoy it. It's three different fables about a man named RF. Something's going off. Someone's calling me. <laughs> Wait. I don't think. <laughs> Just don't answer the phone yet. I, I didn't. I didn't. You have. Um, left. I know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to really pack it all into one. So, I don't want to reveal anything, but I will say, every character in every story might be possibly connected to one another throughout all three of the stories in this movie. It's a long movie. It's like an hour forty-five. That's not long. 
I, I mean, it's a, almost two hours. That's called a movie. It's not called a long movie. Oh, right on. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm glad that you think that, you know? Oh, 30 seconds. Uh, four, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I think it takes place somewhere in the South. There's um, a really sick car at the end, too. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, and uh, and you can listen to shows just as high of a quality like this if you listen to Microwave Minutes. That's this is, so true. That is top tier podcasting. That last minute and a half, uh, it really was. Um, so in the last five seconds, I want to say microwaveminutes.com <laughs> <laughs> What a review!